So, um, apparently someone called and they thought maybe we were shoplifting or something. Okay. Do you know who placed that call? I do not. Okay, well, it was a store. Yes. So do you know, it was, I mean, it would have been one of your employees. What, what would you like me, what do you need help with? I would like to understand why they were called. Right, that's like simple. Why were the police called with the three black people thinking that we were shoplifting? Well, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. Okay. Okay, so what I'm asking you is, when you all came out and they said we had three different shoplifters, they didn't describe us at all? They just like, yeah, they let you know who we were? Two black males. Two black males, yes. okay. All right, guys, so I stumbled across this video yesterday that is going super viral in the race hustling world because they found an instance of racism that they want to cry about uh, that involves a gay black couple. And I'm going to show you guys a gay black couple here in a second and some employees at Bed Bath and & Beyond. And Bed Bath & Beyond is having a closing sale and this gay black couple came in to buy some high ticket items for their closing sale, okay? Because apparently they just bought a new house. Now, uh, this went off the rails when one of the employees at Bed Bath & Beyond allegedly accused the gay black couple of shoplifting and called the police. Now, here's a picture of the gay black couple. Uh, I actually did my research into this individual and it turns out he went to UNC Chapel Hill. In fact, he was the student body president uh, at the university during 2021. And he is the same student body president that accused the university of being racist. Okay. So racist that they told black people not to come, right? If you're considering coming to UNC Chapel Hill as a black person, look elsewhere because the university is racist and the reason for me telling you guys that and bringing it up is because it already kind of lets you know the mindset of the accuser here that this is the type of person that will look for racism right so that doesn't necessarily mean that there was no racism here but just keep in mind again the mentality of the individual okay is this somebody that could possibly take a situation that is maybe some type of microtransgression or a situation that is not going their way and extrapolate that to be racism yeah right so you always got to keep that in mind with dealing with these stories that go viral that show racism but again i think there's a bigger conversation to be had here that individuals like rashad ritchie refuse to have even though he should if he actually really does care about so-called racial profiling and stereotyping is why does it exist in the first place right why would somebody stereotype a black gay couple in the first place that's the conversation that the woke revolutionaries don't want to have so i actually want to react to this video uh but before i get into that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel and you want to support my channel you can check out my merch like for example the shirt that i'm wearing right now my uh, blm shirt by large mansions you can check out that shirt at my website gformanbcp.com get 20 percent off using discount code team bcp so without further ado let's get into it Bed, Bath, and Beyond accused of being a racist because they called the police on customers who were simply shopping. Here's a video. So um, apparently someone called and they thought maybe we were shoplifting or something. Okay. Do you know who placed that call? I do not. Okay, well, it was a store. Yes. So do you know, it was, I mean, it would have been one of your employees. What, what, what would you like me, what do you need help with? I'd like to understand why they were called, right? That's like simple. Why were the police called with the three black people thinking that we were shoplifting. Okay. I paid six hundred dollars for my thing, so obviously I, w I didn't shoplift. Mm -hmm. I want to understand why you thought I was shoplifting. You didn't place the call, but one of your employees did. I'd like to know why. Okay. All right. I mean, I mean, that's standard, right? I'm not being hostile or anything. Because he was, he asked the woman that we pay. I don't care. I mean, if there's if the big purchase items, that type of thing, there's usually a question. We just want to make sure. Okay, usually a question. I can understand that, but police being called, I can understand that. Right, you, you, you're you still a question, so maybe the store will ask a question. Or maybe you all follow me, maybe you follow me around. Sure. Rachel, but, can you come to the front? But that's not what happened. The police were called, we're pot, potential shot, which means we, that We call the someone... police all the time. They have our backs. We okay, well, that's fine, but you call, you didn't call the police because we did shot. You called police because you thought we shot. If I spent $600, I paid my money. I didn't shot. Did anybody you say called anything? Them? Did anything say? Did anybody say yeah, anything? the officer asked her, did we pay? Okay. So someone did say something. I we did do. pay. But what happens is you called yeah. the police while we were still on this side of the store. We were here for over an hour. So you called the police when we first really got in here. Okay. Time out. I no, understand. we not time out. No, we not coming up. I hear what okay. you're saying. Sure. Come on. They want to know why the police were called and they want to talk to the 
the person who did it and they want to know why they did it. Yeah, well, we're profiled, exactly. You call? It's my right. It's your right to do what? Oh yeah, you, yeah, you hear right. So your right to do what? It's my right to call. Because you thought the three black people were shoplifting. Why? They didn't say that. You called the police. You said we have a potential shoplifter. So you did say that. I have more video, and what you hear in the background are other customers being made aware of what's happening. So they start recording as well. Now there are three uh, quotes that I want you to remember. One, big purchase items, there's usually a question, one worker says. Another comment, we call the police all the time, they have our back. Third comment, it's my right to call the police. Continue. No, I'm recording because you don't lost your mind. Are you with these guys? No, she's not with us, but she can say no. I mean, I just want to know, so sir, to make sure I'm not hostile, I'm not being violent, I just want to know why the store called the police because they thought we were shoplifting. We just purchased a new home, right? We came in because you all are closing, it's a closing sale. I didn't realize there was like a maximum number of items you could buy, right? So we were not shoplifting, but the police were called because we thought we were. I'm Ivy League educated, I have on a college shirt, even that doesn't stop us from profiling, right? Not one degree, but two degrees. I didn't call. So you called and you're not saying anything. I'm wondering why were the police called? Because you said, you called them and said we have potential shoplifters because they have- We're oh, not gonna not. be able to, to resolve this. I don't know what you want us to say, but I don't care if the white, black, or green. If somebody is walking around with big high ticket items- it, There's a lot of people walking around with high ticket items. I mean, license, so wait, the fine high ticket items. That's why they walked it up to the counter so that- So wait, here's another thing, sir. Just so we can have the record straight. The high ticket items, the most important thing I had in my bucket was the vacuum that y'all took from me. And you the you were over there when we got what? there. So the high so ticket items. So what you think we were going to steal that? So, 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 so to be clear, right. you all called the police because the high ticket yeah. items were in our bucket. They got a problem to get up with the court for all this. Yeah. I'm sorry? We're not getting anywhere. So if you got a complaint, file a complaint with their corporate office, okay? Well, because we're done here, our, our involvement is done. Well, let me ask you this we question. No we'll let me ask you this question. No more you, well, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. Okay. Okay, so what I'm asking you is, when you all came out and they said we had three percent shoplifters, they describe us at all? They just like, hey, yeah, they let you know who we were? Two black males. Two black males, yes. okay. And so y'all didn't come find us, y'all just stayed here until we came out, right? The main thing was nothing was concealed. So that's right. why we just stood by the, by the door and we let it go. And right. I even mentioned that they could be paying for this. Right. So that's why we didn't okay. approach or we didn't come up to you. Okay. Now, let me just say this before Race Hustling Richie gets into this, right? I'm going to give you guys my opinion. I played the whole thing through. I didn't talk over it, right? I just let it play so you guys can formulate your own opinion. When I first saw that, I said, I'm not sure if this is racial profiling it could very easily just be a mix-up because you have people in there who happen to be black and male right um they are buying high ticket items right so we're talking about probably like what electronics you know expensive items that you know are subject to be shoplifted okay like there's a reason why they lock this stuff up and i've done this before what happens usually when you buy high ticket items and i'm not sure exactly what they bought that was high ticket but a lot of times they try to make you pay for it immediately because they don't want you stealing it. For example, I went in Walmart to buy some headphones just last week and they're locked up. I get the headphones, the associates like, hey, you got to come to the counter and pay for that immediately, right? We're not just going to let you walk around the store with the headphones. You got to come to the counter and pay for it immediately. Now, if I decide that I want to continue to walk around the store anyways with the headset, then yeah, they're probably going to suspect that I'm trying to shoplift. They're probably going to go out of their way to make sure that this high ticket item or these high ticket items that I have are not going to be stolen. So they may take precautionary measures like call the police just in case I try to run out of the store, right? Just in case I'm trying to pull some type of scam or trick in order to take those items out of the store. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened in this situation, but I can understand why these employees would be cautious when you're dealing with individuals who are walking around the store with high ticket items 
that they're not paying for. Now, who knows whether or not they told him that he had to pay for it immediately because it sounds like to me at one point they had took a vacuum from the individual and placed it behind the desk because, again, they don't want the stuff to be stolen. Now, this is a closing sale, so I'm assuming that maybe this store is closing down. These employees are about to lose their jobs anyways, and maybe just maybe they're trying to make as much money as they can, right? They're trying not to have things stolen out of the store as you know, they're closing, right? They're trying to, you know, save as much money as they can. Now, I mean, again, why are they closing? Who knows? With the shoplifting epidemic that's going on around the country, that could be a reason why. They've been dealing with a whole lot of shoplifting and they kind of know how the pattern of behavior goes. Now, whether or not this individual knew that he was demonstrating a pattern of behavior that could suspect him of being a shoplifter, I'm not sure. But regardless, I don't think that they call the police because of his race. I don't think that. I, I really think they call the police because they may have been exhibiting a pattern behavior that can be similar to what shoplifters do when they're trying to steal a bunch of stuff. I believe they had over $600 worth of stuff, right? $600 worth of stuff. Now, here's the thing. In a situation like this, they took their precautions and they called the police. The police showed up and the police who happened to be white did not immediately go up to these gay black males and to tackle them and to try to harm them because they're gay and black and they're committing a crime, which is what what revolutionaries tell us. This is what they tell us. They tell us that this is what happens. That didn't happen in this situation. Even if you feel like you're being accused of racist, racism, right? Because the store took precautionary measures to make sure stuff doesn't get stolen. Look at the way the cops handled the situation. They came in, they observed, they said, okay, this guy's not shoplifting. And they let it go, right? And they were ready to go and leave when this guy continued to want to drag it on and to make a big deal about something that, in my opinion, I think was just an honest, it was an honest mix-up. I don't think this uh, these employees called the police on him because he's black. I think they called police on him because he had a bunch of high-ticket items. And at the end of the day, they didn't want it to get stolen. They didn't want to take the chance of not calling the police just in case you decide to run out the store. So that's the way I look at it from a non-race hustling lens, okay? I'm not looking for racism. I am looking for what are all the reasons outside of race that they may have done this, okay? I mean, and again, it's just funny to me how people like Rashad Ritchie don't have the ability to look beyond just the racial component. Everything has to be racist. So let's listen to his, his tape. The irony of this, let me first say to the individual who documented this, thank you. We need more like it. Also to the officer, the officer said, listen, the reason we did not even approach you is because there was nothing concealed. And we even told the store, um, they're probably just buying things. Wow, the police are saying to loss prevention, this is a little too racist for us to deal with. No, that's not what they're saying, right? That's not what they're saying at all. What they're actually saying is that, yeah, we come by, we did our due diligence, and then we're going to leave, right? These guys, you know, not stealing. And that's probably what they do on a regular basis, right? That's probably what they do. They probably said in conversation, yeah, I don't think these guys are stealing. And that's it. I don't think it had anything to do with race or them saying, look, you guys have been too racist for us. Because I'm pretty sure they get called out there all the time. Considering the fact that the employee there did say, hey, we have a relationship with the police. A good relationship with them because they probably get called out there all the time. So this is probably not the first time they've been called out there. And, you know, they say, hey, you know, everything's fine. We're good. We don't have to worry about it. These people are not stealing. And they, you know, going back on their way. They're probably used to it. That's probably the relationship that they have, which is why the police wanted to basically end the interaction once the employees walked away. They was like, look, they're walking away. We're done. You're done. Like, this, there's nothing here, right? If you got a complaint... Then, you know, go to their corporate office, right, to complain. But other than that, there's nothing There's nothing here. They said that because, again, this is normal for them. They was like, we're de-escalating this. This is ridiculous that you're crying racism. We've cleared you, my guy, <laughs> right? Go move on with your life. So we're going to just let this one go, all right? All right, call us when there's something here. And then... The workers acting as if they are unaware as to what he's looking for. He's looking for an apology. An apology. He's looking 
for remedy and conversation. Yeah, but what is he what does he need an apology for? Nobody approached him. Like the police didn't even approach him. He only knew that the police were called there because he was suspected of shoplifting because he overheard the police say, Yeah, I don't think he's stealing anything. The police didn't approach him, the police didn't say anything. There was really no harm done to this individual who would not have even known about it if he didn't overhear the, the police. Again, I just think it's hilarious. I really do. How you? I'm so hurt. He needed an apology. Apology for what? Because the store was doing their due diligence and nothing happened? I mean, come on, man. It's, it's just like, again, people want to make a victimhood mountain out of a molehill, man. Right? That's what they want to do. This is nothing. There, there's no evidence here that, this, that, that there's racism involved. Only thing you guys are saying is that, well, black man got his feelings hurt because he was profiled. But yet they never want to address the reason why if this person was profiled, why was he profiled? Probably because most of the people that go into that store and steal probably look like him. <laughs> they probably weigh less than him, but they definitely probably look like him. They look like that individual. But this is something people like Rashad Ritchie, they never want to talk about. Why do these stereotypes exist? Maybe, just maybe, black people are responsible for the stereotypes that are weaponized against us. Has anybody ever thought about that? Has anybody ever thought about, well, maybe if you start demonizing the individuals that are making us look bad, then people would stop thinking that, hey, you know, black people are likely to steal something from you, right? Maybe if you... Again, try to punish those individuals, put them in jail, lock them up, get them out of society. If you advocate for tough on crime policies, not soft on crime policies, the policies that Rashad Ritchie advocates for, maybe just maybe we get rid of these individuals that are making black people look bad, that are causing undue harm and suspicion towards law-abiding black folks for simply going to a store and shopping. If that's what happened here, I don't know. There's no evidence that that's what happened here, that they were uh, stereotyped or whatever. But I'm just saying, if that's the case, why people never ask, well, why in the world do these stereotypes exist in the first place? Because in all stereotypes, there's some truth, right? Every stereotype is not necessarily 100% true, but with most of them, they come from some place of truth. And that's what really frustrates me about these guys. They want to quit the boohoo, whine, and cry victim because black people are being stereotyped or profiled, but they never ask, well, why is it? Why is it? <laughs> right? Why is it? It's the reputation that you create, that we have created for ourselves. We've created a reputation of doing stuff like this, and that's why people suspect it. It is what it is. I'm not saying it's right, but it is what it is. But again, you know, these individuals, they, they will never address that. They will never talk about that. Because the apology acknowledges the humanity of the other person that you just violated. Yeah, again, this is the same guy that went out of his way to try to dox and harass a white pregnant lady, okay, because uh, she rightfully got a city bike, right? And he accused her of stealing it from a black teenage boy. Right, try to ruin this woman's life, and now all of a sudden this man is talking about acknowledging somebody's humanity. Right? Again, it's just so. This guy's a clown, bro. He really is a clown. They were shopping. They're patrons. They're spending money in your establishment, helping pay your wages, promoting your company, who obviously needs it because they're going out of business. So he's there, and this is the way you respond to a very simple and very appropriate question. Why call the police on a paying customer? And they told you. They told you because you had high ticket items in your cart that you haven't paid for yet. And we want to make sure that you're not stealing. They told him the answer. He didn't want to accept it. He wanted to hear, well, we call because you're black, <laughs> right? That's what he wanted to hear. Again, this is a nothing burger. This is a nothing burger. All right. Uh, we'll see if the company has a collective response. Max. All right. I don't want to hear his lackey. They never have anything interesting to say. So, yeah, <laughs> you guys tell me, right? Am, am I missing something here? Or is this a shut and close case of racial profiling and call the police because he was black? 
Y'all tell me. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.